untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Pack one, pick one. Open the decent rare with Calamity Bearer. Doesn't take too many giants or changelings for this to become a real threat. And even by itself, 4 mana essentially 6-4 for most intents and purposes. And uh, red's a pretty strong color as well. Can then maybe hope to wheel maybe Crush the Weak if no one else is interested. Other good cards in the pack. There's Feed the Serpent, which is one of the better commons in black. Probably the best common in black. Black's just slightly underpowered compared to some other colors. Um, the heist can be fun, but it's not particularly exciting. And then there's like a snow-covered forest, I guess, which is actually pretty high pick, but I think I'm still taking Calamity Bear over it. Second pack, not a huge fan of Colvori. Takes a lot of legendaries to make this worth it. And as a 4 mana 2 force, not particularly exciting. Frostbire Arcanist, on the other hand, is pretty strong. Uh, if we can get a nice blue red kind of giant's deck assembled, where it's usually not too difficult to pick up a few multiples of some powerful instants and sorceries. And what else is there in the pack? Not much. There's a few snow cards with a chasm, the Sculptor of Winter. Pretty far from activating Great Hall in a red deck. So, yeah, seems like Arcanist here over one of the red cards. And now a third pick. We're seeing some green and some white. More Snowlands. Black also seems relatively open here with Jarl and Kennelmaster. But there's still some decent blue and red cards with this Daneful Stroke and the Sertland Frostpire. I mean, we could cut off blue-red aggressively here by taking a land. It might not pan out if we don't end up specifically blue-red, but it's certainly what uh, the start is kind of pointing towards. I do like this Daneful Stroke quite a bit, usually happy with the first main deck copy. Hmm, let's take the land, maybe. And then see if we end up in blue-red. Alright, fourth pick. We're seeing more snow stuff with Sculptor and Sinkhole, although no real payoffs necessarily. Three Seasons, of course, could also be in the snow deck, but that's not one of the real incentives for it. We see a Glade Warden, which is okay in green. And then in blue-red, there's not a whole lot. There's a Mists or a Haggy Mob, which is not even a giant, so... It's not incredibly high on the list of priorities. So, maybe this is a good time for us to think about a snow deck, take a Sculptor, or we could take Glade Ward and keep options open in green. Or I can take a Mists as like a playable blue card, even if it's not particularly exciting. It does pair well with Calamity Bearer in the sense that it can shrink down an opposing creature and we can still easily kill it with our damage doubling effects. Alright, pretty happy with Doomscar Titan, which is a giant. Also has Fortel, can beat down pretty hard. This is definitely at its best in a more aggressive build of giants, whereas the Arcanist is going to be a bit better in the more controlling builds. There's also Firewalker as a decent creature at 3. So, red still seems relatively open if we're getting 5th pick Firewalker and Doomscar Titan. Uh, Invader I'm not a huge fan of since it enters tapped, but... Maybe can be a consideration if we get one late. Crush the Week here seems pretty nice. Uh, plays well with our high toughness giants and gives us a nice early game sweeper. This card definitely overperformed in our previous Blue Red Giants draft. So, yeah, don't mind it. So. Definitely more committed to red than we are blue, but hopefully we can play both. So far we're not doing great on the instants and sorceries for Frostbire Arcanist. Well, that's interesting. We didn't see a ton of green or white, and now all of a sudden we're seeing Usher the Fallen, 
Valkyrie and Struggle for Skemfer all in the same pack. I think I'm leaning Struggle just because I feel like green is going to pair better with the red we currently have. As opposed to the white. Red-white typically wants to be a low-curve aggressive equipment deck. Whereas we're shaping up to be a bit more mid-rangey with some larger creatures. So I think green will be better if we don't end up blue. And the only blue card really worth talking about is the Flood Plane, which could be okay if we end up with a couple snow synergies, but that's no guarantee. Alright, so no green cards here. But I will probably take Kin Seekers. Doesn't seem like a Goldfane pick deck. Need more cheap creatures for that to work. And yeah, of course, uh, Kin Seekers also counts as a giant, which is helpful with Calamity Bearer. And uh, it's going to make it easier to accumulate a plus one counter. And this was our opening pack, where we didn't really wheel anything super useful. Maybe a Haggy Mob. Didn't think this is a Fearless Pop deck. Could also speculate on Recluse in green. But maybe we'll still play Mob if we need something at five. This is actually kind of interesting, like Berserker can be a decent card in aggressive red decks. That's not exactly what this is setting up to be. Although both Caesar Spoils and Run Ashore could be cards we might want to get back with Arcanist if we get multiples. Although I don't really foresee a deck having multiple copies of Run Ashore. Maybe we want multiple Caesar Spoils. Uh, just to help us ramp and filter through the deck if we don't get better card draw. Although I'm pretty happy with Disdainful Stroke here. And another Hangy Mob, just in case. Alright, Firewalker, 13th pick, that's surprising. It's not going to be at its best in our deck, again, because our curve is pretty high, and this is better with cheaper curves. I think second Caesar spoils given the Arcanist, and Raven Form is also not incredibly exciting. Probably not going to play three Caesar Spoils, but you never know. Ooh, this could be fun. Reflections of Lejara, naming Giant. And we even have our Caesar Spoils to ramp into it on turn four. Thanks to the treasure token. I'm down. And then we can hope to wheel... Like, maybe another Stroke to go with Arcanist, or... Like, Firewalker, Harbinger could be okay in this deck. Don't think we're going to wheel Inga. If we didn't open Reflections, we would probably take the Packmate and just pivot into green and ditch blue. I think Packmate's enough better than the blue cards here that that's potentially worth doing. But yeah, we'll go with Reflections. There's no card I'm super thrilled about. We could splash Vicious Return of the Treasure Tokens from Seize the Spoils, I suppose. So if we end up with like a Calamity Bearer, or not Calamity Bear, but uh, the seven mana giant, we can potentially reanimate it. But we're not going to have many cheap creatures to sacrifice. So I could take Snow Island on the off chance that we get Bergstrider later. I could take Cavalry, although it's a little awkward with Crush the Weak. Do also have a lot of Berserkers. So it's, it's possible that Reflections ends up naming Berserker instead. Doesn't combo with the tokens, has to be an actual creature. But I could see an argument for cavalry. Yeah, let's take the islands. Another Doomscar Titan. Seems good. Passing pretty good white card here in Protector. I mean, we do need to lower the curve a bit. But for now, Doomscar seems like the, the best pick. Ooh. Now this pack's exciting. Don't know if we have enough snow to really justify Avalanche Caller, but Bergstrider is a lot more feasible to enable. And uh, Mistwalker is also a nice one since it counts as a giant. The way the curve is shaping up, I think Mistwalker might be the pick. Just because I want something cheaper. It survives Crush the Weak. Counts as a giant for Reflections. Sets up our Kin Seekers a bit better. But I would love a Bergstrider would probably replace Haggy Mob in a heartbeat here. Oof, man, this pack is tanked too. Of 
course we're gonna take Invasion here. But uh, another Burkstrider, Shimmer Drift Veil to enable it, and a Cinder Heart Giant to ramp out with Invasion would all be pretty nice. But yeah, the, the Saga seems too good to pass up, and very unlikely to wheel at this point. So let's hope that we wheel either Burkstrider or Cinder Heart. And now I can take Island, perhaps. Another Firewalker could be okay, but we did pick up a Mistwalker as another 3-drop. Still not sure how many Caesar spoils I'll end up playing. But uh, yeah, you never know how many Snow Synergies we end up with, and especially if we wheel Bergstrider. Those islands are going to be useful. This pack is stacked too. Got to behold the Multiverse and Squash, as well as a Craven Hulk as another giant. Probably going to take Behold over Squash, but this one's close. We do have a decent number of Giants and Changelings to make Squash a 2-mana removal spell. We're not incredibly high on removal, but we also could use some card draw. And especially if we end up with multiples, that's going to make our Frostbite Arcanist that much better. And now it's second kin seekers, depart or mountain. Could use some more cheap interaction, some leaning departure realm over another kin seekers. But we could also easily end up with another depart, and then we'll want a mountain if we end up with a Burkstrider or two. This one's close. I'll take the depart. And then maybe we'll play Harbinger. And could take my cavalry now if I want it. Don't have a ton of expensive instants and sorceries. Although Harbinger is going to be reasonable in this deck. Now I'll take the cavalry actually. There's a chance that Reflections ends up naming Berserker in this deck, because taking a look at our creature types, we have seven Berserkers and only four actual Giants, so that's another argument. I'll take Raider. Probably not going to be great here. Don't know if I'll end up playing it, but seems better than the six mana Giants, given that we only have the one Invasion. Reinforcements is actually kind of okay with a Doomscar Titan. And we wield Firewalker. Alright, so didn't get any Burkstrider sadly, but maybe the last pack delivers. And deliver it did. Got a Giant's Amulet, Invasion, and Squash. Now pretty realistic that we're the only blue reds giants drafter at the table so wheeling invasion doesn't seem out of the question which makes me want to take either amulet or squash now amulet doesn't benefit from our reflections since it's a token but it does benefit from calamity bearer and of course it's just a good card individually could replace a haggy mob or I can just take Squash because we don't have much removal. I do have double uh, Harbinger here potentially. I guess we only ended up with one Harbinger since we took the cavalry over it. But we do have a, a few ways to ramp out Squash as well. And then probably going to take Glimpse over Mistwalker here, even though I would love another Mistwalker. This is just great card advantage in a Giant's deck. And then hope to wheel Mistwalker, although that seems unlikely. Maybe the mountain wheels if we end up with more snow cards, although don't have any at the moment. All right, I mean, I think I'm down. Double reflections, and then we have triple season spoils to ramp into it on turn four, and then reflections can take over. I don't know if it's going to be good, but at the very least it's going to be fun. Ooh, frostbite. Yeah, I gotta take the cheap removal spell here. Our late game with double reflections looks quite powerful, just gotta make sure we have some cheap interaction. Even have a few snow lands to go with it, although 
probably not going to get to three snow permanents anytime soon. Hoo-hoo. Basalt Ravager. This is also awesome with uh, reflections if we get multiples. I mean, Cinderheart would be okay too as a curve topper. I'm hoping we can get one in these last couple packs, but Ravager's just too good here. All right, so definitely have an interesting pile. Probably not going to play Raider. I think I'm down to play all Caesar Spoils. Ooh, nice. What a pack once again. Agar the Freezing Flame is awesome. Although it is kind of awkward with Reflections, because it's legendary. So is this a world where... I take a center heart giant over it. I don't think that's crazy actually. The only burn spell we have to combo with Agar is squash. It's close. Could also just take another squash there. I mean, best case scenario, we just get another center heart in the, the last few packs here. Or another invasion. Yeah, I think we take invasion now. But. I mean, Crush the Week could be fine too here. Alright, so... Probably not going to get a Cinderheart, but I will take another Depart, so we have two for Arcanist. Alright, so that's the, the Invasion we were counting on. So now we have three, although... Sadly, we don't actually have any Cinderhearts. The Cavalry... All right, can we get a last second Cinderheart Giant? Probably don't need four Seas Spoils. All right, I'll take a Kin Seekers. Yes, all right. I've never been happier to see Cinderheart Giant. All right, so let's take a look at this pile. I mean, it also would have been reasonable to take Squash over Agar, so we would have had two copies of Squash to get with uh, Arcanist. So this is quite a pile. Um, we almost have no cards in the sideboard, but we'll have to make some cuts here. So first things first, what are we naming with our reflections here? 11 Berserkers. Seven giants, so it's either going to be giant or berserker, most likely. Let's take a look at some of the smaller creatures here. Put our interaction in a separate pile. So reinforcements, I don't know if I want. Probably don't need to splash Struggle for Scamfar, even though we can splash it off Caesar Spoils. We could just cut a bunch of the small Berserker stuff, although then we'll have to reevaluate Reflections here. So if we cut all of them, which might be too many, we still have six Berserkers, seven Giants, so now naming Giants becomes a bit more appealing. Maybe shave a Hagi mob, since we're a bit loaded on fives. And then, of course, two changelings that can also count as giants. Can maybe shave one Caesar Spoils, still have two. I mean, it's it's kind of interesting, because with double reflections, we really want to hit that turn three Cs, turn four reflections, and then turn five start playing our giants. So maybe, maybe we do want all three Caesar Spoils, actually. Yeah, we could cut second Haggy Mob. It's just like a nice beefy creature that's nice to copy with Reflections. But we do have double Doomscar Titan, and Doomscar Titan especially is quite nice to copy with Reflections too. So we might not need it. So we've got five Berserkers, so two Doomscars, a Sinner Heart, Haggy Mob, Calamity Bear. So yeah, if we, if we cut Haggy Mob, then all our top ends are just giants instead as well as some of our other changelings. 
And then Basalt Ravager also gets copied. Agar not super helpful. All right, still need to make a couple of cuts. Myths can probably go. Um, so how are we doing for duplicates for Arcanist? I guess we've got Depart and Seize, so that's probably enough. But I probably don't want to cut a second Depart then. And the part can also pick up our own permanents, so we can replay them with reflections in place, so that's a neat little trick we can potentially pull off. I'm assuming we want to play 17 land. And we can just discard extra lands with uh, Seize the Spoils. This could be a deck where we don't want all three invasions, just because we don't have that many Cinder Hearts to ramp into. But invasion still replaces itself. The Scry 2 is useful, and we don't have that many Fortel cards, so we don't have much to do on turn 2. So I don't hate Triple Invasion. Yeah, uh, I could see this Daneful Stroke not fitting into this deck, since we're kind of a tap-out deck trying to combo with Reflections, and the only other cards we're going to be playing at instant speeds are the Part and the one copy of Behold. So it's not the best this Daneful Stroke deck. I guess Squash is another 2-mana instant. But yeah, I could, I could see cutting the the stroke. One nice thing about stroke, I guess, is that we have doubled the part to potentially bounce something and counter it on the way back. But our deck should be able to take over the board with double reflections in the late game. Maybe Harbinger? Yeah, we don't have that many expensive instants and sorceries, I suppose. And we're not going to be naming wizards with reflections, so that can probably go. Do we need both Kin Seekers? I do need to make sure I have enough creatures to go with the Reflections as the thing. So it's kind of important that we keep as many as possible. So yeah, I don't think I can afford to cut any Giants or Changelings. Which means we either cut Invasion or some Interaction. Maybe I can cut one Depart if we play all three Seizes, but if I... Um, if I only have... Two seizes and two depart uh, and one depart. I don't think that's going to be enough. So maybe I can see cutting one depart. And now that we cut depart, I'm also less likely to want to cut invasion since we don't have much going on on turn two. So that makes it even more difficult to make that final cut. Is there a world? I guess we still have Doomscar Titan that we can foretell on two as well. All right, maybe I'll cut one invasion then. That's fair. And Behold's another foretell card, so we've got a few things we can do on turn two. Yeah, so we can potentially get two Seizes if there's one in the graveyard if we copy Arcanist. So that's another neat interaction. All right, I think this is okay. And then the mana base slightly skewed towards red for these double red bearers and Doomscar Titans. So we've got nine reds, eight blue. Looks good. I'll play the Snow-Covered Islands as a flex. And it also makes people unsure whether they need to expect cards like Burkstrider or not. Alrighty, on the play. Oh man. This is so close to being good. If we draw Seize the Spoils and a third land, I could maybe justify keeping this, but this is rough. Yeah, I think we gotta take them all here. Alright, this I can keep. And yeah, we've got turn 3 C's, turn 4 Reflections, even Doomscar Titan we can foretell onto. So this is kind of the perfect start. Battlefield Raptor. And then... Hopefully we can pick up a land here. Oh man, am I going to have to discard Behold the Multiverse here? Or do we get greedy and discard land? Probably want to play Mountain. Yeah, I think we get a little greedy here and hope to draw an extra land. Keep Behold. Alright, we got there. So next turn we get to slap Reflections into play. And then... Get a double Basalt Ravager, double Doomscar Titan after, it's going to be sweet. Mm. 
giant it is. So this is going to deal 1 and then 2 damage, so we can take out a 3 toughness creature if we want. Yeah, so we'll deal probably 3 to the champion total. And this Doomscore Titan's looking mighty fine. Can attack past the Guardian thanks to the 2 extra power. Oh yeah, we are presenting lethal damage, but our opponent, of course, is allowed to block. We could Doomscar first and then Ravager would deal more damage, but it still doesn't, you know, deal enough to kill Guardian and the 2 3 at the same time. And this way, Doomscar Titan is going to deal way more damage. So I think this is the preferred sequencing. Opponent just taps out to foretell a bunch. Yeah, that Guardian's going to have to block. I guess they could have to deal 5 to tapped creature here, but that seems fine. Turn them all sideways, best case scenario for the opponents. They kill one of them, and then they get to trade for another one. Alright. So they're not super dead, I guess they can block the 5-4 if they want, but... So, this was kind of the best case for them, and they're still, you know, taking 11 and losing their 3-6. Raptor keeps chipping in. Alright, I can behold and still depart. Yeah, those are both good. Start by attacking. If they bounce my non-token, or if they try and kill it, rather, I could also bounce it with the part to replay it. Turgrid Shadow at instant speed. So I think we pick up Doomscar Titan. <laughs> oh yes, you betcha. Now I might want to keep Invasion in hands on the off chance that my opponent has the discard to Skull Raid. Yeah, that seems best. Oh, I guess, yeah, we could have foretold the Doomscard. I guess it was just safer there if we wanted to play around Discard. But uh, I think we'll be just okay here. Another Turgrid Shadow. Fair enough. Well, they had the answers they needed here, but they're still in trouble. Oh, yes. Opponent can be happy to see this on top. How much damage is this Doomscar Titan gonna deal? You do the math, chat. Can you even count that high? Oh, 
opponent gets to see Calamity better before it happens. Alright, please don't concede yet. Ah, uh, our opponent conceded. 32 damage, according to chat. I believe you. You know, maybe the correct play was to play the Calamity Bearer, get the copies first, move to combat, and then just before blocks, Frostbite the blocker so they didn't have the chance to concede in response to the triggers. So I think I messed up chat. My apologies. Alright, this one I can probably keep. Yeah, I think 32 is the correct answer. Alright, what are we discarding? I could discard the second C's. Maybe one expensive giant can go, in which case Cinder Hearts furthest from getting cast, and Doomscar is pretty nice if we find reflections because of the haste. So I think discard Cinder Hearts. And then the second C can discard land if we draw too many. Alright, so now I can probably ditch one lands, we'll see. Opponent in the meantime playing a snow deck. Do I want to keep digging or do we get on the board here? I really want to find reflections first, chat. Not gonna lie. And then next turn I can still go Kin Seekers plus Quash for two. I guess invasion to keep digging. Alright, if we can find reflections next turn, that would be awesome. Oh yes. Oh yes. And then, so next turn I can play reflections, hopefully it doesn't get this Daneful Stroked. And then I'm probably fine with the uh, land 6 here. So hopefully they don't mess with our game plan here. Counter spells are the most obvious way for them to do it. Lindworm. Alright. You know. That is gonna hurt. But I'm not gonna make it stop me. So next turn they can deal 10. And then we gotta get on the board quickly, but I can like play, let's say Calamity Bear and Squash in the same turn. Yeah, I mean, I think it's worth it still. This isn't a coward stream. We also get the discount from Invasion, so we can potentially just double giant. We could just kill our opponent next turn. We can go Calamity Bear into Doomscar Titan. No, opponents, how could you? We gotta adjust a little bit here. I mean, I can still go Reflections, play Calamity Bearer, which wouldn't be bad. Yeah, I think we still get Reflections in play here. Seems like the most mana efficient.
Yeah, the Zainful Stroke would be bad. Also, I still get to play Banner, which trades for Lindworm. Although, I guess this can be pumped because of the two Snowlands, so it would be dead to Stroke. I mean, Stroke probably beats us no matter what here, right? Next turn, maybe... Ooh. Ouch. Yeah, that's incredibly obnoxious here. Now we gotta... I guess we're just dead. Gotta chum the Lindworm and then they can pump the Eyesight Troll. Well, that's too bad. We had the, the dream set up here. But they had the, the right answers, unfortunately. Just imagine going Calamity Bear into a hasty Doomscar Titan, all doubled. How much damage would that have been? So we get two Calamity Bears, then two Doomscars. So one of them gets plus two, one of them gets plus one. So we have two five-powered Calamity Bears, one five-powered Doomscar, and one six-powered Doomscar. So let's do the math. We've got... 15, 21 giants attacking with double Calamity Bear, so 21 times 4 is 84 damage. Oh yes, I mean this is our Blue Rats Reflections constructed deck basically. Turn 3 Cs, turn 4 Reflections, even have the Doomscar Titan. This is perfect, just need to draw into Calamity Bear. Our hand got even perfecter by drawing the Frostbite. Oh no, not the giant ox. Anything but the ox. Are we gonna get plowed again? Alright, that's fine. You can have a Batter Shield Warrior. What to discard here is a question. I mean, we're keeping Ravager and Reflections, that much is clear. I don't know if I need second Seas unless we're gonna miss on a land, which is unlikely, to be fair, in three draw steps. And then we have all the lands we need pretty much to cast the Giants in hand, which we have a decent amount of. Um, the parts might be more relevant interaction if something happens with the Ox, which is more difficult to kill. Frostbite's a clean answer for a Warrior, so I think it's between the part and Seas. I guess Ravager can also deal with Warrior once we do double it. So maybe Frostbite's not needed, but it's, I guess, nice to double with Ravager to maybe take something bigger down. Let's ditch the part. Not gonna waste my treasure token here. Alright, I mean, now you're making it real tempting. Sure. So we can Invasion, which lets us cry to and then draw next turn, which digs equally deep as Seas, and we just need 5 mana for Reflections anyway. Although Seas guarantees a Treasure Token. If I Invasion, I also get to Foretell, so there's a little bit of upside. I mean, we could Seas into Invasion if we draw land, that is. And discard Crush, which probably doesn't do much for us here. Alright, I'm not going to Invasion now, I think. Or do I? We're pretty likely to draw lands. And getting the discount with Reflections in place pretty decent. 
All right, a bit of a risky play here if we don't find a land in, I guess, four looks. Tap land doesn't really do it. So we get a draw step and then a draw from invasion. Hopefully we don't miss. All right, it's all coming together. They can see Ravager. And then what to play first? We could Bearer first and then Ravager can take out a Giant Ox. That's probably the most fun we can have here. I mean, we could have potentially even played both if we drew a Mountain. I guess we can Squash if we Bearer. But there's no way we die here, right? Maybe I should behold for land that's greedy. All right, so we want a red source. Rally the ranks. What's it gonna name? Oh, this has all creature types thanks to the Arachnoform. That's cute. All right, I really want to get the Calamity Bear in, in play and double it. So if we can drag out the game, we will. All right, so they can see this. All right, so now we've got Squash at the ready. Eh, I could attack and kill the opponent here, but let's wait. That's fine. All right, let's get one of these out of the way. <laughs> I hope I get punished somehow for the greed. They even found a legend. Look at that. All right, all right, this is enough. Don't concede, please. Please let damage happen. Please, opponents, I beg. Oh, yes. This is draft, by the way. All right, this is probably still okay. Seize the spoils plus arcanists to get another one, hopefully dig towards our reflections. Alright, so the only card we want to find here is Reflections, pretty much. Anything else goes to the bottom. Doomscar Oracle, opponent on Mardu. Mm. So whatever I reveal, I want to discard here, pretty much. 
because I'm going to seize in the hopes of drawing into my enchantment next turn. Arcanist can get another seize the spoils eventually, so that's the one I'm definitely keeping. Ravager seems good, Mistwalker something cheap. Might be Kinseekers then. It's between Kinseeker and Sinnerheart. You know, sometimes you gotta dream big. Oh yes. Firewalker. Alright. We might have to take a little detour here and play a creature before playing Reflections. I know, I know. I'm disappointed too. What happens if we take seven? I mean, to be fair, if I play Reflections, next turn I get to get two copies of Seize the Spoils with my Arcanists, so that's a lot of value. Um, and then Ravager can clean up the board nicely, so we're taking a little bit of damage, but it's to prevent damage in the future, so it's kind of like an investment, you know? Alternatively, we could go Mistwalker into Ravager. Let's play it safe. I'm a bit of a coward here, but that's fine. And then turn 5 Reflections, turn after we can double Arcanist and then set up for double Cinderheart. Sure. Alright, that's too bad. But now they can't play their Oracle at least. Squash is nice too. But we didn't come here to squash. We came here to Reflections. Next turn Arcanists. Do I chump is a question. Nah. I think we take it, and then next turn we can play 4-mana Arcanist and Squash. Otherwise we lose the discount. Cavalry. Sure. So, get both of them. Just perfect deck building in full display. Just gotta be a little careful with this Tormentor's Helm. I think we'll manage. Alright, so opponent's gonna just attack with Firewalker, presumably. I think we just kill it then. before they get to turn it sideways. That's okay. Oh yes. Keep Mistwalker back in, on the off chance that they have a flying creature, they can give haste here. Oh yeah, we're gonna cease and look for Calamity Bearer next turn. Double Calamity Bearer with double Cinderheart should close out the game in one attack. Okay. They've got a 4-4. Four, four. Double Bearer does indeed stack. I mean, what's the worst that could happen?
Yeah, I guess a sweeper would be unfortunate here, but then they probably wiped the board before attacking, so they get to keep the spirit. And with only one card in hand, we didn't have to fear a run amok plus Kaya's onslaught. Yeah, so our opponent's going to try and win with their flyer. Alright, now sequencing is kind of important. So what gives us the highest chance of drawing into Calamity Bearer? Glimpse looks at three cards, spoils at two, but also gives one mana. I guess, let's see, three... I should probably Glimpse first. I mean, Doomscar's good too, although we can't cast it at the moment. Mm, so it's not incredibly helpful. So we probably Glimpse again. Yeah, Glimpse again is probably the place. So I guess we'll keep Doomscar. Alright, fine. It's a little boring, but... I guess we'll take the removal spell. If you really make me. So this is attacking for 14. If I attack with all, they can block one, go to two. So I don't have guaranteed lethal. So just send these two. And then we'll Frostbite when they equip. I guess I can wait until they go to beginning of combats. Don't want to let them attack because then they could cast Run Amok, which only works on attacking creatures. I guess hmm, this was bad because now they could Chaos Onslaught and give it plus one plus one. I should have killed it in response to the equip. I guess in that case I would just let them attack and then wait and then take two, because there's no three damage burn spells, I don't think. And then I guess if they cast the Onslaught, we respond with the Frostbite, so we would still be fine. I guess there is Provoke the Trolls. Doesn't make the final cut very often. My, uh, my heart is telling me keep. My brain is telling me mulligan. Alright, fine. Probably ditch Cinder Hearts. So do we wait on Invasion? I think we do and just Glimpse, and then by waiting on Invasion we might be able to get the discount after Reflections. Probably need land over another Invasion. Crush the Week could be good. But, I mean, Ravager deals with small stuff and we have the part if they go all in with some equipment. Sure. Not sure why we're main phasing this, but I guess maybe playing around a counter spell. Which is fair. So we could depart just to buy a little bit of time and then wait one more turn on invasion. I don't hate that actually, because then we'll get the discount after we get reflections in play. Probably just wait to depart here. I guess I could have foretold it. But I'm 100% to bounce protector here. So now they'll have to spend their mana replaying it, take some of the heat off our life total. Alright, just gotta find more giants. Those are giants. Mistwalker also excellent here as a blocker. So probably keep both. Ordering doesn't matter too much. Alright, so we'll take four, then play Reflections, then hopefully not take too much after. And then it's party time. Alright, 
that's what I wanted to avoid seeing. Take six down to eleven, at least seven. So if they have like a Warhorn Blast, we could be in trouble. Yeah, Warhorn Blast would be pretty deadly. But I think I need to go for double blocker instead of one, just in case they have removal spell instead. And then I guess we'll show them a Doomscar Titan. And then next turn I can play one mana Mistwalker into Ravager. So we get to deal three and then four, so we can kind of kill most of their board. But we're dead to land Warhorn Blast. Alright, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. We're still alive. Can even glimpse here. <laughs> Evil laugh. Didn't think I'll have time to play second reflections, probably just another Doomscar. Maybe killing a protector is still better just to avoid putting this in their graveyard, but this does have first strike. They know about Doomscar Titan. They don't know about the second Doomscar Titan. Yeah, and Gold Moss kind of scary. Yeah, they don't have any other stuff in the graveyard at the moment. So if we can force some chum blocks, that would be nice. Um, I mean, I'm gonna play this either way. So, let's say I attack with everyone. Then I can block one here. Chump, chump, take 11 plus 3. It's not lethal, and then I could die on the way back. So I probably just send the ground troops. Then what happens? They have to chump with one creature. So they would chump with a raptor. And then, if they have a removal spell plus the mana, they could kill me on the way back, but... Hmm. I guess three six power creatures is enough here. Still threatens lethal, so they have to chump and we leave an extra blocker back for champion. I like that. I mean, I'm assuming both guys gonna tap down a flyer instead. Alright, that worked out. So opponent keeps the flyers. Can they kill us? Maybe. It's got to be something pretty specific. Probably requires a second color. All right, and we got there. Well, that was probably the most fun I've had in a draft in a long time. Hopefully you'll indulge some of the silliness. I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.